Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dan Fullerton, and today I'd like to talk to you for a little bit about air resistance. Our objectives include utilizing free body diagrams to identify the forces exerted on an object, to write and solve Newton's second law equations corresponding to given free body diagrams or pseudo free body diagrams, to predict the motion of an object due to multiple forces by applying Newton's second law of motion, and finally to predict the behavior of an object under the influence of air resistance. So let's dive right in. Air resistance is a type of drag or fluid resistance. It's a form of friction between a moving object and the air around it. Now, typically, the force of air resistance depends on how fast an object's moving. The faster you go, the more air resistance there is. And you can test this out in your car someday. As you're riding along in the car, open a window, and if you're going really slow, stick your hand out, just hold it up, and feel the force of friction against your hand. Now, as the car's going faster and faster, it can almost get hard to hold your hand up. That's what we're talking about. That's how air resistance is proportional to the velocity. And it can be proportional to the linear velocity or proportional to the square of the velocity. So you could write that the drag force is propor proportional to some constant times the velocity, where that constant we could call b, or oftentimes it's proportional to some constant times the square of the velocity. And usually it's not even that simple. Sometimes it's a combination of these things, but that's a good way to start to model it. So let's talk a little bit about terminal velocity. An object falling through the atmosphere accelerates until it reaches some maximum vertical velocity, a point where the drag force up matches the gravitational force pulling it down. At that point, it's not accelerating anymore. That's known as terminal velocity, which will represent V sub with a uh, sub t, v sub t. The object falls at a constant velocity because all the forces are balanced. It's in dynamic equilibrium. It's moving at a constant velocity, no acceleration, net force is zero. The drag force matches the gravitational force. So let's take a look at an example here as we talk about a skydiver. Assume the drag force is proportional to the velocity, or square of the velocity, and let's start with the linear velocity here. So if we have down is our positive y direction. We've got a skydiver jumping from a plane. The free body diagram would look something like this. We have the force of gravity, the skydiver's weight pulling down, and we have the drag force going back up. And at any given point in time, this drag force could be changing. That's all right for now. And we'll use Newton's second law and look at it in the y direction to see what we can learn. Net force in the y direction equals mass times acceleration in the y direction, which in this case tells us that net force in the y direction, that's going to be mg minus the drag force, must equal may. But if we assume now that the drag force is proportional is equal to some constant times the velocity, proportional to the velocity, then we could write, however, that mg minus, replacing f drag with this bv, is equal to may. Now let's take a look at a couple different points in time now. At time t equals zero, when the skydiver just jumps out of the airplane, vertically, the velocity in the y direction is zero. Therefore, the acceleration in the y direction is just going to be g, the acceleration due to gravity. Because when you do that, if the velocity is zero, there's no drag force. After a long time, however, as t approaches infinity, as it gets longer and longer and longer, the skydiver's velocity approaches terminal velocity, vt. At that point, the acceleration in the y direction approaches zero you get closer and closer to this terminal velocity where you have no acceleration, no net force. So putting that all together, we could write that, let me grab a different color here, mg minus bv equals may, right from there. And at the point where we're at terminal velocity, we know that the velocity is equal to vt, and at that point, we also know that the acceleration in the y direction is zero. 
So we could then write that VT, MG minus BV, if V is VT, MG minus BVT equals zero, or rearranging that, VT equals MG over B. We now have an equation for the terminal velocity. What would this look like if we wanted to graph it? Well, if we started off with an acceleration time graph, initially when the skydiver first jumps out of the airplane, the acceleration is just going to be g, the acceleration due to gravity. And as time elapses, that's going to get closer and closer to zero, so we'll have a graph with something close to that sort of shape. All right, we accelerate. Acceleration begins at g, and over time it declines to zero as you reach terminal velocity. So what would the VT graph look like? Well, vertically, when the skydiver first jumps out of the plane, and let's make note that this is the y velocity, the y component of velocity, initially, that's zero, same as if you had dropped something from a bridge vertically, and over time, that gets closer and closer to the asymptote VT. So let's put our asymptote here. And note that that's VT, which is mg over b. So we're going to have a graph that looks kind of like that and approaches the terminal velocity. And finally, let's look at this position time or displacement time. Displacement's going to begin at zero, of course, and increases as speed increases until it reaches a constant rate of increase when the velocity levels out at vt. So it's going to look kind of like, well, let me redo that. That's not quite the prettiest. It's going to look kind of like that and get to a point where now you're in a linear regime where you have a constant velocity. So let's see if we can't look at these all together and just recap them one more time. The top one, our acceleration time graph, acceleration begins at g and over time declines to zero at terminal velocity. For the vt graph, the velocity begins at zero and increases until it reaches terminal velocity. And for displacement, the displacement begins at zero and increases as speed increases until it reaches a constant rate of increase, a constant slope as you get to the terminal velocity. All right, hopefully that gives you a start on air resistance and terminal velocity. If you need more help or are looking for more information, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks, everyone. Make it a great day.